All right, welcome back everyone to the Athlete's Mind podcast, another MMA episode. A lot of you guys know that I love doing these interviews. We're really trying to get the MMA episodes back on here because you guys, feedback has been amazing on them. Um, check out our recent one with Wes Kappa. Um, feedback was great with that. So we're back with the MMA. Just quickly before we get into this episode, this is sponsored by Elite Motion Strength and Conditioning. If you're an athlete and you want to enhance your performance, go and check them out. I'll link all their details down below. Now, today we have Anthony Drillich on the podcast, Flyweight Eternal Champion. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me, Anthony. It's a bit odd calling you Anthony yeah, since yeah. my name's that, but... <laughs> yeah, mate, I think you're the first Anthony I've had on the podcast. So, yeah, easy <laughs> name to remember. Now, we start every episode the same here on the podcast, get a bit of a backstory. So, how did you actually get into MMA and where did your journey start? Oh, so... Um, I'll have to start when I was born, pretty much. Our uh, father was a martial artist. So um, he grew up doing things like karate, a lot of um, South East, Southeast Asian uh, martial arts, you know, kung fu, karate, dunk kickboxing, boxing. Mm. So he's done quite a few martial arts. And obviously growing up, we had things like um, like punching boards and you know, nunchucks and yeah, swords yeah. and spears and all cool. sorts of stuff uh, growing up. So, and you know, watching movies as well with him, you know, watch kung fu movies, you know, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, things like that. Yep. So um, I think growing up, we're ready had in our mind that yeah we love martial arts and it was it was a part of us and i think from there it just stemmed off and we wanted to pursue fighting you know and we grew up competed in jiu-jitsu things like that and then from there it was just game on you know mm. got to got to my late teens early 20s and then i really wanted to make it my profession and here i am yeah and were there any other sports that you tried out when you were younger or was it just always yeah. martial arts um majority of martial arts i've done i've done things like uh skating like ice skating cool yeah so gave that a, gave that a go with my brother when we we're young you know trying to learn how to figure skate and things like that yeah obviously we're not that great at it <laughs> um yeah d- done archery um as a kid we did rugby a lot yeah so grew up playing rugby tried other sports never really worked out we didn't enjoy it but um yeah the one we really stuck to other than martial arts was rugby growing up yeah cool now i want to kind of know i'm interested to know when did you start taking mma really really seriously like at what point would you say that you reached in your career that you were like okay i can actually go somewhere with this oh i can't give an exact date but i would say in my early 20s Mm. early 20s um yeah started fighting obviously i competed as a, a young you know early teens and um yeah from there once i got to my 20s you know i was competing and i fought and i was knocking dudes out mm. and you know winning with um great performances and things like that and i was like i think i can go somewhere you know brother believed in me parents believed in me i could go somewhere with this and i stuck to it mm. yeah. yeah and did you expect to like achieve the things you have now because you know there's a range of achievements that you've made like when you started did you think oh yeah i can go and do that or have you kind of surprised yourself with a bit of it I guess in a way I surprised myself. Um, I kind of, uh, you know, everyone's got that goal, especially you say, obviously, being a mixed martial artist, um, then, you know, they want to be the UFC world champion, and that's the main goal. Um, of course, you know, for myself, I see myself, you know, going there and winning the belt, but I didn't I didn't really, um, yeah, I didn't see myself, you know, going, well, you know, sitting here and, yeah. you know, winning belts and things like that. It kind of just one day at a time, then, you know, got offered the, to fight, then one thing happened, and mm. next thing I've got a belt around my waist, and I just kept going from there, and, yeah. you know, just stuck to it. Yeah, I can imagine it would feel, like, pretty surreal, like, especially once you had that belt around your waist, um, a massive achievement. Now, um, I want to ask you about your training at Scrappy MMA, is that correct? Yep. So, have you trained there your whole life, or? Not my whole life. Um, For the last, maybe three three four years possibly even five years yeah um obviously well um we i knew ben i knew the guys from there years ago yeah but um actually fighting out of there and that being my 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 camp and my home there yeah it's only been a few Mm. years now and how have they like impacted your development obviously you said that you've known ben for quite a while but um i can imagine that they played a major role in your career major role yeah Yeah, definitely um everything i've won or yeah completed accomplished um in the last few years have really been thanks to them as well as obviously thanks to my brother mm. down at dca so yeah they played a massive role great guys down there ben's amazing so yeah they push me yeah oh, it's interesting you just mentioned um dca the drillage combat academy um i mean you are wearing the jumper um <laughs> how how has that like journey been like you're involved with some coaching down there how's yeah, that been so through? myself and my brother we obviously um we're partners in the gym mm. so we're running it and um 
yeah uh at the moment i'm coaching obviously just came off a fight so back in coaching full time there in the afternoons but yeah obviously uh when i'm in camp it, it's a balance you know mm-hmm. obviously you know there got to be days when my brother's got to take over yeah you know and yeah. run it so i can go and train either at scrappy or do my own thing yeah but um yeah at the moment it's just work-life balance kind of thing happening yeah 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 cool I, I, i'm also interested to know because like a lot of people that i have interviewed on here that are also involved in coaching they say that it actually helps them like kind of even though like i'm sure you'd be teaching the basics a lot of the times and stuff but that also helps you in your performance because Although you had a very elite level of MMA, teaching the basics sometimes helps you just see the little things. And has that like has coaching kind of helped you 100%. understand it better? Definitely. Even yeah, like even uh, last night, I just went over just some simple stuff for MMA. You know how to defend off the wall, and there's kind of like little light bulbs go off, and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, and you can do this, and it yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. it feeds into me, and I'm like, all right, I might work that more. Yeah. So yeah, definitely 100. percent Um, it helps. Cool. Now, I want to talk about, obviously, your most recent performance on Eternal 85, um, performance of the night, knockout of the night. How does it feel coming off the win? You know, great performance. Oh, obviously, it feels good, you know. Um, to be able to get a uh, knockout in performance of the night is always nice. Um, yeah, I, I go into every fight doing the same thing. I just go in there to fight, you know, mm. uh, keep it simple, go there to, you know, try to find a way to end this guy. Mm. And, um, yeah, I don't try to make it too complicated. And if it, if it works out, it works out. Yeah. Now, you have had some crazy knockouts in previous fights. I want to ask, where does this one kind of rank between some of the others? Bit of a tough question because there's just so many, but where would you put it? Memory, like, uh, for something I remember, it's it's amongst it. I wouldn't say it's number one. Um, but according to, you know, friends or whatever, or family who have watched it, they're like, I reckon that's the best knockout you've had so far. So, yeah, yeah, yeah cool. for me... It's just another day. Obviously, it's nice that I've, you know, it's a big victory, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's the one I'm always going to remember. Yeah, cool. Now, how was the crowd at HBF Stadium? I've heard from other people I've interviewed on here. It's just like crazy. One of the best crowds that Eternal has. Like I, I can imagine having the crowd behind you, your home crowd would make winning much better. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, the crowd is, the crowd there is amazing. Um. Yeah, I could hear him roaring and going crazy, you know, when I was backstage, you know, yeah. something ha- might happen, you know, someone gets dropped and yeah, you can feel it like it's like thunder it just comes through um, yeah. the backstage and you can feel like almost like just everyone cheering and that like that just that the vocals of them just going, you can feel it almost through yeah. your chest. It must give it's, you a pretty big adrenaline rush. It does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when you get there, you can feel that going. So yeah. yeah. Now it's no doubt that you are looking to get signed for the UFC 305 in Perth. Um, I've seen a lot of that. Um, a lot of people have been telling, like saying, get Anthony on the card and all that. Um, that would be amazing. Now, how close do you think you actually are at getting that opportunity? I'd like to think I'm really close. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. You know, especially from that last fight getting a good you know good knockout in the first round and you know, really stamping my foot down and showing what i'm capable of i feel like i'm i'm, I'm right there yeah yeah i mean you've made a lot of statements and that one is like just another one on top of an, all the other things that you've done in your career so you are very close now of course even though that is your goal to get on usc 305 nothing is certain of course um if that wasn't to happen where would what is next for you in your career I don't know um i'll just keep fighting i guess yeah. um obviously that's my main it's like my main priority that's number one getting myself to the ulc you know even since i was a child i've always wanted to be there you know you watch the fights you're like that i want to be there that's mm. i'd like to stand in those people's places yeah um yeah so that's that's number one goal yeah if that doesn't happen for whatever reason or it's delayed then i just got to keep fighting i mm. guess yeah do you think it would just add more um, flame to the fire kind of thing? Like, you know, you it would just build your hunger even if you don't make it onto the 305? Yeah, my, my hunger's always going to be there. Yep. And obviously, I'll take that into my next fight. If I, Whether it's in the UFC or not, I'm just going to go there and just do my thing, push myself and, yeah, try to obviously get to that goal. Yeah, and of course, you know, be, UFC being that main goal for you, I'm interested to know are there any, like, fighters that you have looked up to or kind of based your style off from when you were younger or even currently? Um, I always like to go back to like say Manny Pacquiao, guys yeah. like that. Obviously, I'm half Filipino. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. being a Filipino fighter and Filipino superstar, yeah. Um, it's always nice to watch guys like that. And obviously, Manny Pacquiao is Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. What is he like? Eight-time world champion. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
yeah, watching guys like that, and he's also a southpaw as well. Mm. So it's almost like I'm trying to pick the moves and see what he does. Yep. You know, I can add that to my game. So people like that, you know, um, you know, greats like Fedor and um, amazing heavyweight a Russian fighter, guys like that, um, guys who make spectacular finishes, whether it's submission or knockouts. I like, you know, that's mm. what I like to watch. Yeah, and I enjoy. So guys like that, I'll watch them and see what they do, and mm. I try to like, you know, pick things apart or take what um, might work for me. Yeah, and go from there and see if it works for me. Cool. Now, we do like to ask some personal and mental questions here on the podcast. Yep. After all, it is athlete's mind. The first one I have for you now. This one is pretty tricky, especially with the MMA fighters I interview on here. They, it's a bit of a hard uh, question to answer, and that is with all the people that you kind of have in your life that support you and you look up to for advice. Who would you say is that key person that has always been there in your corner and really supported you? I'm sure there's a long list. There's I can, coaches, I can, family. I can already answer one straight off the bat. Yep. Yeah, my brother. Your brother, yeah. My brother, 100%. Um, he's, he's like, he's the man that works behind the scenes and people don't, might not see much of him, but he's he's like the rock, you know? Um, holds me together, holds, holds our business together. Mm. You know, he's able to, he knows how I run. You know, yeah. He will say like things like, I know you better than you know yourself kind of thing. Yeah. And in a way he does. Um, he knows how I run, how I function, how my mind is, my you know state of mind, things like that. So he knows how to motivate me. He knows how to slow me down if I need to slow down, things like that. And um, yeah, I'd say he's probably the major role other than say people like my coach Ben. Of course, yeah. Um, he's probably the major role in my life of um, where I am today mm. and where I want to be. Yeah, I love that. I think that that's really important to have someone like that in your life, um, whether it's a brother or a close friend. But that that I'm guessing that plays like a major role. Like, do you think you would be where you are without him? Less chance. Less well, chance. Less yeah. chance. So he's really played a major role for you. Major role. Yeah. It's like you know when the people say like you gotta have that person who's 100 percent you trust him with your life. Yeah. He's that person. Awesome. Yeah. Now, is there ever been a time? in MMA or in your journey where you've experienced a bit of mental burnout and what I mean by that is have you ever kind of felt like you've been exhausted not not so much physically but just with how, you know whether that's in a camp leading up to a fight where you've been like damn this is really getting to me um whether that's you know during a weight cut or how much training you're doing and if so how have you sort of dealt with that mental burnout yep oh, obviously burnouts is something that do happen you know a lot of fighters depending on the fighter they don't want to be too honest about it and, you know, they always want to be the, I guess, like macho. Or they always want to be strong. You know, they don't want to show weakness. But we're athletes, we're humans. These things do happen. I find for myself, a lot of it, like mental burnouts, um, happen just from hormone levels. You just train, 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 train nonstop all day. And then you just burn through all that test and all those hormones. And you're just on a low. You know, you're just like nothing's maybe nothing's working for you that day. You're getting beat up and sparring. You're trying to do stuff and it's just not working. And you just like, you know, you start to question yourself, things like that. And um, you just got to remind yourself, especially if you're more experienced, you go, you have these days, you know, it's, it's going to pass. Yep. Get over it. You know, wake up the next morning and go from there. Mm. And normally things just get better. Yeah. And I, guess, all, I guess that goes for depression and yeah, yeah as yeah. well. You know. yeah. It's all part of the journey, though. It is part of it, yes. Yeah. yeah. And now, what motivates you to actually keep going in your journey? Obviously, UFC is the final destination. But other than that, maybe on a bit of a deeper level, like what is that one thing you think to when the journey starts to get a little bit tough and you're really tired and exhausted? I've been doing martial arts my whole life. Um, it's almost like, you know, I don't want to say it's like my identity. I don't want to be just like Anthony, the MMA fighter, you know. Obviously, there's a lot more to me than just that. But I grew up doing this. This, this is almost all I know. You know what I mean? So I live and breathe martial arts. I live and breathe being in the gym. Um, it's just what I do. So almost born and bred yeah. to fight almost, you know? So awesome. um, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, people get fatigued or you go, man, how do you do this? It's just like, um, I don't really know. I just yeah. go in the gym and train. That's, yeah. what I, that's what I do. You love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That's the way. Um, now, what advice would you give for other people, maybe younger guys or girls who want to get into MMA and actually compete and fight? Um, I'm sure you get a few that come to your gym. What advice yeah. do you give to them? Just start training. Just um, hop in the gym, do the classes, get good. Get some experience, you know, learn, enjoy it is the main thing. You know, you don't want to make it like, you don't want to be tired and be over it within a couple of weeks because you just like train, train, then you just burn yourself out. Yeah. So go in there and enjoy it. Love it. 
you know learn you know i guess that comes with enjoying it as well if you really enjoy it you'll start to learn a lot better and then once we feel or they feel like they're ready to compete you know we might start them in a small show or jiu-jitsu competition is always good there's always one like every week or every second week yeah so we can be like hey you know there's a jiu-jitsu comp in a couple months Mm. that's your goal get yourself nice and ready get yourself focused for that and then we'll go from there yeah and we'll see how your performance is what we're going to work on and yeah We'll go that next step. Do, do you think jiu-jitsu is like the, the best like base to kind of start off with with MMA? Jiu- jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu um, is definitely something that you need, um, especially in mixed martial arts. You're going to end up on the ground eventually, you know, yep. whether it's your game or you just end up there. So especially as a beginner, I definitely um, suggest, you know, doing obviously some sort of striking and also grappling. But the thing about grappling compared to say striking, you're not getting punched, mm. you know. Yeah. You can learn to grapple without being beaten up, and you're, yeah. you know you're not going to work, doing a nine to five with black eyes and all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. And um, you can you can enjoy. It. There's a lot more. To, like I want to say, there's a lot more to learn, but there's a lot to learn in jujitsu. So every day is always going to be interesting. And doing the jujitsu comps can be easy to get into. It's mm. so accessible. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, yeah, I would suggest doing it jujitsu just because it all just works a lot easier mm. and easier to sign them up, get them in the competition as well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, on the podcast. We love doing the MMA episodes and we really hope to see you on USC 305. That'll be wicked. Thank you, Anthony, for having me. Yeah, no Cheers. problem. <laughs> now, everyone listening, this will be on Spotify or podcast platforms and our main platform, YouTube. Um, run up our socials and follow us on Instagram. Also, follow Anthony. You don't want to miss his journey. Massive things happening for the future. We'll catch you guys in the next episode of The Athlete's Mind. Thank you. Thank you.